Sarah Lee's got the devil in her tonight. Little bit bored with summer,、uh, but not quite ready for school to start. Just for devilment, she plunks herself down beside me in the swing and starts doing everything I do. I sigh, she sighs. I rest my arms on my head. She does the same. Gets Becky doing it too. Both of them laughing to beat the band. When I have my fill, my fill of this nonsense, I decide to go up the hill and see how Shallow's doing. But as I go down off the porch, Darlene gets up and makes as if to follow me. I stop. I'm looking to find me a snake stick. I say as if to myself. I'm looking to my I'm looking to find me a snake stick. Darlene says. I don't pay her no mind at all. Just start walking along the edge of the yard, picking up a stick here, a stick there. Darlene tagging along behind. It's got to have the longest handle and good and a good strong fork on the end. I say because that was the biggest, meanest snake I ever saw in my life. Darlene stops the that still. She couldn't say all that right if she tried,、uh, but she's not interested anymore in trying. What snake? She says, "Snake I saw up on the hill this morning." I tell her, "Must have been four or five feet long, just looking for somebody's leg to wrap up to wrap wrap itself around." Darlene don't doesn't go a step farther. Becky don't even doesn't even come down off the porch. What are you gonna? What are you what are you going to do when you find it? Darlene asks, trying to keep it from biting me. First, pick it up with my stick. Second, put it in put it in a sack and carry it clear up clear on up past the shallow's gloves. Let it out in the woods there. Won't kill it unless I have to. Kill it, says Darlene. Get your gun and blows its head off. You've been watching too much stuff. You've been watching. You've been watching too much stuff on TV, Darlene. I tell her. Even snakes got the right to live. I'm thinking, how if I ever become a vet's helper? I got to take care of pet snakes too. Next day, to head off David Howard from riding up from friendly on his bike, I go down to see him. I tended to Shiloh first, taking a fistful of scrambled egg left over from breakfast, a bit of bacon, and a half slice of whole wheat toast that I stuck in my jeans pocket. It's not enough for the dog, I know, but prob- probably more than he'd get from Judd. It's not enough for me either. Sneaking off half my breakfast, lunch, and dinner for Shiloh, like I'm doing, means me going half hungry all the time. But if I eat extra, then it means Shiloh's costing us money we can't afford. We can't afford. I feel. I fill my pockets with wormy peaches before I set out for friendly, biting off each piece, spitting it out in my hand, and picking out the worms before I put it put it back in my mouth. It pl- pleased me that Shallow was slipping in his lean to when I'd gone up the, that morning. It pleased me. The ground was dry under there, and I brought up some old gunny sacks, gunny sack, from the shed for him to lie on. Made it seem more like a bed to him, more like a home. The walk to friendly takes a good long time unless I hitch a ride. I'm not allowed to get a. Getting a car with somebody I don't know, but that being the mail carrier for this part of the country, I know most everybody who goes by. The first person to come along this day, though, is Joe Traveler Travers, 
When I hear the sound of a motor and turn to see, turn to see his truck slowing down, I turn forward again and keep on keep on walking. But he pulls up beside me. Want a lift? He signs out. No thanks. Almost there. Where are we going? I couldn't think fast enough to lie. David Howard's. Hell, boy, you're even half away hopping. I know I don't have to.、Uh, I don't have to unless I want. But if he's already suspicious, suspicious about me, that'll only make it worse. So I get in. See my dog yet? First thing out of his mouth. I've been looking over all the roads. I tell him in answer, no beagle. Well, I don't think he'd be he'd stick to roads. Just says, not a dog as shy as not a dog as shy as him. Shy as a field mouse, kept, except except when he's around rabbits. That's what the man said who sold him to me.、Uh, and he he sure was right about that. How much did you pay for the pay for him? I ask. Got him cheap, cause he's shy. Thirty five dollars. Worth a lot more than that. More than that as a hunting dog. If I could just keep that damned animal home, you got to treat a dog good if you want him to stick around. I say, bold as brass. What you know about it? Judd jerks his head in my direction, then turns the other way and spits his tobacco out the window. You never even had a dog, did you? I figure a dog's the same. The dog is the same as a kid. You don't treat a kid right. He will run off worse chance he gets too. Judd ra- laughs. Well, if that was true, I would have run away when I was four. Far back as ki- far back as I can remember, Pa took the belt to me. Big old welt on my back, so raw. I could hardly pull my shirt on. I stuck around. Didn't have any place else to. Didn't have any place else to go. I turned out, didn't I? Turned out how? The boldness in my chest is growing, talking up all the air.、Uh, now just sounds mad. You you trying to be smart with me, boy? No, just asking how much turned out. Somebody who was beat since he was four. I feel sorry. Is what I feel. Just real quiet. Real quiet at a moment. The the big old wad of tobacco in his cheek bobs up and down. Well, don't go wasting your sorry on me. He says nobody ever felt sorry for me, and I never felt sorry for nobody else. Sorry is something I can do without. I don't say anything at all. We reach the road where David Howard lives, and the truck slows down. I can walk from here. I'll tell. I tell him thanks. I get out. But as I come around the truck, come around the truck to cross the street, that leans out the window. Like I said, that dog's a shy one. Don't think you'll see much of him near the road. But you keep your eye out of your you keep your eye out for him in the fields. That's where he will be, more than likely. You see him. All you got to do is whistle. That's what I teach him. I whistle and he comes to me. He gets fat, but he does something I don't like. I kick him clear to China. You see him just whistle, then hang on to him and I'll come pick him up. You hear? I hear. I tell him and keep walking.、Uh, but he does something I don't like. I kick him clear to China. Clear to China. Chapter Seven. David Howard's house is about twice as big as ours for about half as many people. Only him and his ma and dad. Mister Howard works for the Tyler Star News in Caesarsville, and David's ma is a teacher. They are always glad to have me come down to visit, partly because David and I are best friends, and partly I think because their old house is so big. The three of them get lost in it. It's got two floors, three counting the basement, th- three counting the basement, and four counting the attic. 
has four bedrooms upstairs. One for David, one for his folks, one for one just for company, and one for his father's book, with a computer in it. Downstairs, there's a big kitchen, a dining room with a fancy light hanging over the table, a parlor, and a side room with lots of windows just for plants, plus a porch that runs along three sides. On the house, of the house, I told Ma once the Howards had a room just for company, a room just for books, and a room just for plants. And she said that she said there was three room, rooms too many, three rooms too many. First time I ever saw any envy in my Ma. Any envy in my Ma. David says the house used to be. Used to belong to his great granddaddy, so I figure it'll get to be David's someday, like maybe our little house and the hill and meadow and the far and the far woods will belong to me and Shiloh. Except I'd probably have to share it with Darlene and Becky and whoever they marry, and that's a whole a lot of people for four rooms. Marty, Mrs. Howard says, when I ring their doorbell. That sounds like church chimes. We're so glad to see you. Come on in. She always means it too. It's as tough as it's as tough. She thinks about me even when I'm not there. Uh, Mrs. Howard says when I ring their doorbell, that sounds like church chime. We are so glad to see you. Come on in. She always means it too. It's as、uh, as though she thinks about me even when I'm not here, not there. Then David comes hooping downstairs, carrying the helicopter that flies when you pull a string. And pretty soon we're out in the backyard, chasing around after around after the helicopter and telling each other what we've been doing the six weeks since school let out. I got to bite my tongue not to let one not to let on about Shiloh. We sit on David's back back steps and eat popsicles. His mom makes out of pineapple juice. I tell David about the fox I saw with a gray body and a red head, and he tells me about his aunt Seamus cat that yells just for the pure pure joy of making noise. Then I tell him about Joe Travers and how mean he is to his dogs, not mentioning Shiloh, of course. And then David says he's got the surprise to show me. We go upstairs to his room, and David says he got a pet, and asks to asks to, I want to hold it. Sure, I tell him. What's it? What is it? Shit, sit down and close your eyes and hold out your hands, says David. I sit down on the edge of his bed and close my eyes and hold out my hands. I expect something warm and wriggly. And furry to plop into my arms. Instead, I feel something cold and round and plastic. And when I look it, it's a fish fish bowl with a with sand in it and a hermit crab scurrying around with a shell on its back. This is a pet, my first pet. David says his name is Hermy. Hermy. She see all those shells in there. We bought them for him. At night, he gets out of one and puts another one, puts on, puts on another, just like changing clothes. I like. I look at David and I look at that crab in a fish bowl, fish bowl, and I want to tell him about Shallow and how we run up and down the far side of the hill every day and roll in the grass and how he licks my face. But I can't tell him anything. Not yet. Not ever. Maybe. Hermes sort of sort of fun though. We get out of we get out David's old blocks,、um, the kind you play with back in kindergarten, and we build this big maze with walls on both sides, and then we put Hermes in it. 
He skids along the maze, looking which way to go, and we laugh when he gets himself in a dead end. I guess any kind of path's okay once you get used to it, but I wouldn't trade Shiloh for all the helmy crabs in the world. When can I come up to your house? David asks me when we put the blocks away. I don't know, I tell him. Miles had this sort of headache lately, and she's she can't take any noise. She can't take any noise at all, boy. Boy, I am sure asking for trouble with that one. We could stay out on the big hill. David suggests. Suggests chase around in that field. Play lookout. Don't think we ought to till she's feeling better. I say I'll let you know, but I can come down here again next week, maybe. I tell Mrs. Howard I got to be home now, home by late afternoon to help out, and she says surely I can stay for lunch. Uh, late afternoon, uh, which is what I was hoping. I sit down at the table with placemats, which are little doll-sized tablecloths. One under each plate, Mrs. Howard made us each made us each a chicken salad sandwich with lettuce and tomato and toothpicks with olives on top to hold it together. David's ma is is like that. I think it's because she's a teacher, always looking for ways to make something better than it is. She does the same with boys. She doesn't just leave us to eat by ourselves. My ma packs us a lunch and let us eat. Let us eat out in the woods. Mrs. Howard always sits down to eat with us and talks about grown-up things. Today she tells us about how we've got some new people elected to office, who are gonna be more honest. She hopes than the people that. People they defeated, and how the country is going to be better because of it, and so will the whole state of West Virgi- West Virginia. Davis Ma, think big. You can't just go on electing people to government because they were friends of your father. Or you can't just go on electing people to government because they were friends or your father or grandfather. She says, chewing one bite, chewing on a bite of celery. Mostly, I'm thinking about the food. I eat every bit of my chicken sandwich. I'm so hungry. I don't even save some for Shiloh. Then I'm ashamed of myself. Mrs. Howard notices the way I picked up every little crumb, and she says, "I've got enough chicken salad left for another half." A sandwich, Marty. Would you like it? Sure, it would take. Sure, it would taste good on the walk back home. I tell her, and she sets right to work, wrapping it up for me. Shallow dinner. I tell myself, but lunch isn't over yet. After the sandwich, there's. After the sandwich, there's tapioca pudding and chocolate covered. Graham crackers, which I love almost as much as Christmas. I don't see any way to get the pudding to Shiloh, so I eat that. But I ask, I ask, can I take a couple of a couple of cookies along to eat on my way home too? And she opens the sack and sticks in six cookies. Ma would have blushed with sh- with shame if he she heard me ask this, but seems I am. The point. I'm at the point where where I'll do most anything for Shiloh. A lie doesn't seem a lie anymore when it's meant to save a dog. And right, right and wrongs all mixed up in my head. Worse than that, when I leave David's house, I don't, I don't even head home. First, I go down the street to the corner store and ask, ask Mr. Wallace, does. He have any sort of old cheese or lunch meat? He can sell me cheap. I got fifty three cents for the cans and collected for collected so far. I collected so far that that turned 
in for me, and I show Mr. Wallace how much I got. Well, Marty, let me see what I can find back here, he says, leading me into the little room behind the counter. He's sort of, uh, he's sort of talking without looking at me, the way folks do when they don't want to embarrass you. I got some stuff here that's not exactly spoiled, but it's too old to sell. Wouldn't want your family getting sick on it, though. I blushed then, cause my dad would die of embarrassment if I knew if he knew what Mr. Wallace is thinking that I'm buying this food for our supper. Uh, um, sort of old cheese or lunch meat he can sell me cheap. But there's no way in the world I can let on about Shiloh. I gave him all the change, it, change I got, and he lets me have a big hunk of cheese, moldy on one side, a curtain of sour cream, and half a, half a package of frankfurters that somebody opened and bought five of. Um, I'm happy as a flea on a dog. Somehow, I know without asking that Mr. Wallace isn't going to tell isn't gonna telling folks about it because people around here tend to keep quiet out of someone else's business. Next problem I got to solve though is how to keep all this stuff from spoiling in the July hit. Can't keep it can't keep it in our refrigerator or Ma would um, Ma would notice right off. When I got get home Ma's ironing and watching TV, and Darlene and Becky's out on the front swing with paper dolls spread out all over the place. So I fish around out in the shed, in the shed, till I find me an old high sea can. I sneak off, uh, I sneak off up the hill with the can and all the food I got with me. Then with Shelly watching. I put a rock in the bottom of I put a rock in the bottom of the bottom of the can to hold it down. Set it in the cool stream surrounded with rocks and put the container of sour cream, the frankfurters and the cheese and cookies in there. Put the plastic lid on and set a large rock on the on top to keep the raccoons out. I'm so proud of myself. I like to crow. Hungry again too, but that half chicken salad sandwich from Mrs. Howard is Charlotte's dinner. I give it to him right off. After that, Charlotte and me go on a good long run over the meadow on the far side of the hill. And after I take him back, put fresh water in the pie, can, pie pan and love him good, I start down the hill. Halfway to the bottom, here's, here comes Saraline. What you doing up there? I ask her, heart starting to jump. Just wanted to see what you're doing, she complains. You got off, you got off, you got off up here every, every day almost. You leave Becky by herself while Ma's ironing. Becky's okay. She turns and follows me. She turns and follows me back down the hill. Shallow, up in the pen. Don't make a sound. That's how smart the dog he is. Well, I was looking for the that snake again, but he's hiding from me. Good. I tell her you still didn't get him. She asks, and when I look back, she's got her eyes to the left. Then the right. You didn't even take your snake stick. She says she's smart one too. Got me, got me a stick back up on the hill. I tell her how many snakes do you figure out. How many snakes do you figure are up there, Marty? Oh, oh about twenty nine that you can see. Baby snakes all over the place, though hiding, growing to big ones all the time. Darlene's walking faster now, hurrying not to, hurrying to get on by me, watching every place she sets, for she sets her foot. 
I don't feel good about this. The lies I tell Darlene or David or his mom, but don't feel exactly bad neither. If what Grandma Preston told me once about heaven and hell is true, and liars go to hell, then I guess that's where I'm headed. But she also told me that only people are allowed in heaven, not animals. And if I was go to heaven and look down to sh see Shallow left below, head on its paws, I'd run away from heaven, sure. Chapter eight. Next two days go by smooth bo as buttermil buttermilk. A Shallow gets biscuits or toast. And a couple of bites of ham for breakfast, and then in the evening I fix him up some frankfurt fritters, cut up and mixed with sour cream, and little chunks of cheese. He doesn't much like the cheese. I sticks to his I sticks to his teeth, and he turns his head sideways when he chews,、uh, trying to get it off. Licks. His chops afterward, though. He throws up the first time he bites the stuff to reach for his belly, I guess. But after that, after that, he managed to keep it down. And all the while, all the while, he's fattening out a little. Each day, it's harder to see his ribs. Ribs. Harder to see his ribs. I know my secret can't go on forever, though. Only had the dog for six days, and that evening I find out th that Judge Travers wants to hunt on our land, up the hill and over in the far woods.、Mm -hmm. Thinks maybe he could find himself some. Pale over there, he says. When Dad tells us that piece of news at dinner, my whole body goes cold. I want to jump. I want to jump up and scream. No, but I just grip my chair and wait it out. Ray, I don't like that idea at all. Ma says you never ask hunt. You never ask to ask to hunt on this island, and I don't want him hunting on ours. If we let him, we've got to let anyone else who asks. And one of those shoots could find its way down here. Way down here. I'll tell him no. That says don't like the idea of it myself. I'll tell him the kids play up there. I stopped gripping the chair, but my heart still goes on thumping hard. I'm thinking how maybe Joe Travers has hold the idea of hold the idea that I got his dog hit up. There and he's looking for an excuse excuse to snoop around. Having shallow secret is like a bomb waiting to go off. The next day, Dad comes home with more news. Good news to him, bad news to him, me. Can't figure it out. He says, walking through the door with a sack of his hands. Folks are talking to leaving me food. Huh? Folks are talking to leaving me food in their mailbox. Lou used to be it was just Mrs. Ellison and her banana bread, but found me a ham sandwich today in Nora Kling's Kling's box and half a baked pie in the Saunders. I I look thin to you or something. My laughs. Maybe it's just you're the best mail carrier they ever they ever had on the route. Well, we got half a pie for dessert tonight anyway. Dad says, "Oh, brother," I say to myself, "Maybe Mr. Wallace is doing more talking than I figured. He wouldn't come right out and tell folks I was in I was in his store buying cheap food, but he might just pass it along that the Preston families." In hard times, and thirdly, food starts appearing. That's the way it is here. The next day, Ma rides into town with Dad, taking the girls along, and goes shopping for new sneakers for Darlene and socks and underpants for Becky. First time, I have the whole place to myself. 
and I let Shiloh run up, run pure free, bring him down the hill to the house, feed him the hills of, feed him the hills of the hills of a loaf of new bread, all the leftover sausage from breakfast, and a bowl of milk. Then I let him lick that o- the oatmeal pan, show him every one of our first four rooms. Hold him in my lap on the porch swing and laugh when he when he tries to stand up. The seat himself while the swings moving swings moving. I let him smell the couch where I sleep and crawl under the front steps to sniff sniff out the mole leaves under there. Follow him over creation. When he takes out after a rabbit, then he gives up when he sees I'm not going to shoot that rabbit. No way. Um, when he takes out after rabbit, but I figure my luck's going to run out if I don't get him back to his pen soon. So about noon, I take him back, and he goes right to the gunny sacks. In the lean-to, he's so tuckered out. It's just in time, cause when I get back and get the dishes done for Ma, the house picked up some. I look out and here she here she comes up the lane with Darlene and Becky and their packages. Somebody gave them a lift. You can always count on that around friendly. Ma, please! I got the dishes done. I can tell. Nice to come back to a clean house, Marty. She tells me had good luck with my shopping too. Wasn't a thing I bought that. Wasn't a thing I bought that wasn't a sale. Darlene's wore whole new sneakers, home, and got a blister already. But she don't care. She she doesn't care. She's so glad to have something new. When I walk in the kitchen next, Ma's looking at her face in the mirror over the sink. Got her eyebrow raised, eyebrows raised high. Then she poses them low, then raises them again. When she sees me studying her, she says, "Marty, I got frown lines on my face. Tell him the truth." Ma's looking at her face in the mirror over the sink. Got her eyebrows raised high, then she pushes them low, then raises them again. When she sees me studying her, she says, "Marty, I got frown lines on my face. Tell me the truth now." I look, I look at her good. Sure, don't see any. I say, I don't neither. Ma's got a pretty face, plain but smooth. Well, I don't either. But two people this morning asked me how I was feeling, and one of them wants to tell me what to take for headaches. What's what's what to take for headaches? I figure that if folks think I have headaches, I must be doing a lot of frowning. That's my heart. Folks think. They got a remedy for something. They will tell it to you whether you need it or not. I say. Sounds so grown up. I hardly recognize myself. So scared inside, though. My stomach's shaking. Ma's taking out all the things she's bought, and putting them on the table, taking the price tags off Becky's underpants and socks. I saw Davy's mother at the dollar store. Uh. She says, and they've got relatives coming in tonight. She wanted to know if she could bring David up here tomorrow when the rest of them go to Parkersburg. I told her yes. Okay, I say, but all the while I'm thinking what I'm gonna do with David, David, to keep him off that hill, take him up toward the old Shiloh schoolhouse, maybe, and walk along the river. Funny thing is, you've got yourself a dog. You sometimes feel like you don't need anyone else. Used to be, I'd be waiting at the window for David Howard to come up. He 
here for a visit. Nobody else loves you as much as a, as a dog. Nobody else loves you as much as a dog. Except your mom. That night, mom makes us fried chicken for supper. First time in a long time. First time in a long while. I put away a wing and a thigh on a sa- saucer to eat later. I tell mom and add a spoonful of squash. Which might be good for Shiloh's inside.、Um, he eats anything. The Frankfurter, Frankfurt waters, and cheese and sour cream is all gone. So I got to be watching for table scraps again.、Uh, and go out can collecting soon. Dad's working on the pickup after dinner, changing the oil. Becky and Arlene's. Turning summer salt in the grass, and Ma's cleaning the kitchen. Soon as her back is turned, I sneak the food off the saucer and head up the hill to see Shiloh. I can tell Shiloh likes the fried chicken better than he liked the sour cream Frank Frankfurter mess he'd been eating all week. Even it's the squash. And then he licks my hand and fingers to get all the salt off. Any place I would touch a piece of chicken, I I pitched, I touched. Since I'd already taken him all over creation that morning, I don't feel he will miss much if I don't take him out again. So I go around scoop. Since I've already taken him all over creation that morning. I don't feel he will miss much if I don't take him out again.、Um, I go around scooping up all the dog do, like I do every day, toss it over the fence, and then I lie down on my back in the grass and cover my face with my arms. Our favorite game. Shella goes nuts trying to uncover my face. Nudging at my arms with his nose, tail going ninety miles an hour, never whines like some dogs do. Though, even when we are out in a, in the far meadow, racing the wind, he will start to bark, and I'll say "shalla sh," and he stops right off. Wish I could let him make a little noise. It's it's not natural, I know, to keep an animal so quiet. But he is happy, quiet, not scared, quiet. I know that much. I move my arms off my face after a while and let him rest his paws on my chest. And I'm lying there, patting his head, and he's got his he's got this happy dog smile on his face. The breeze is blowing cool. It's blowing cool air in front. In、uh, the the breeze is blowing cool, blowing cool air in from the west, and I figure I'm about as happy right then as you can get in your whole life. And then I hear some, <gasps> I hear someone say, "Marty, I look up," and there's Ma. I can't move. Seems as if the sky is swirling around above me. Tree branches, tree branches going every which way. Ma's face even looks different from down on the ground. Shiloh, of course, goes right over, tail wagging, but all the steam's gone out of me. How long have you had this dog up up here? He asks. Not one trace of a smile on her face. I sit up real slow and swallow, but but a week, I guess. You've had just dog up here a week, and you told him you didn't know where it was. Didn't say I didn't know. Uh, he asked, had I seen him? And I said I hadn't seen him in our yard. That much was true. Ma comes around to the trunk of the pine tree. Unfastened the wire that holds the fencing closed, and lets herself in. She crouches down in the soft pine needles, and Shallow starts leaping up on her with his front paws, licking at her face. I can't tell at first how she feels about him, 
the way she leans back, away from his drip, dripping tongue. Then I see her hand reach out with its short, smooth fingers and stroke him. So we've got ourselves a secret, she says at last. And when I hear her say "we," I feel some better. Not a, not a lot, but some. How come you? How come you to follow me up here tonight? I want to know. Now I can tell for sure her eyes are smiling, but her lips are still set. Well, I had my suspicions, suspicions before, but it was the squash that did it. The squash, Marty. I never knew you to eat more than a couple of bites of squash in your life, and when you put away a spoonful of that. To eat later, I knew for sure it wasn't you doing to doing the eating, and then the way you've been sneaking off every night. She stops stroking Shiloh and turns on me. I wish you'd told me. Figured you'd make me give him back. This dog doesn't belong to you.